It's asking about, with Mario coming out, the possible future of video game movies. Hey, John and Company. I've been a fan since the Man of Steel review. My name's Steven. My question is, would be a game that you'd like to see become a movie? You know, this is uh, the week that Super Mario Bros. comes out. I'm just, I'm just questioning, like, what movie would you like to see? All right. Thanks a lot for calling that in, man. And you know what's funny? Yeah, you know, Mario Brothers is coming out uh, tonight. The first reactions were great. Actually, today at uh, noon, they are dropping the uh, review embargo gets dropped. So a little bit later in the show, we'll run over and take a peek at uh, what the actual review ratings are turning out. The Again, the opening reactions were all pretty damn great, but we'll see what happens once that review embargo drops, and we'll check in with that at 12 o'clock. But when you look at recent video game adaptation, stuff right what has worked sonic worked Uh, i thought sonic worked really well it looks like it sounds like the mario brothers movie has worked Uh, well i'll find that out tonight at midnight for myself last of us worked but a lot of stuff has not you know uh warcraft didn't work Uncharted. I'm not, I'm not gonna like I kinda liked it. Well, I mean, if you ask Ray, Uncharted was a masterpiece. So there are a lot of people out there that liked Uncharted. But yes, some and of those us those people are wrong. <laughs> including me. <laughs> no, you're did you're not fine. like I, I didn't particularly like I didn't hate Uncharted, but I you know, I think there's potential there. I think there's potential. But you got things like Assassin's Creed didn't work. I mean, on and on. The the list is long. It, it goes from me to you. Like, what's this, 15 feet, 20 feet? Mm-hmm. I, I mean, list long of all the video game pro- projects and properties that didn't work. But if you look at the ones recently that have, assuming that Mario Brothers is one of them from the reactions, Sonic the Hedgehog, I wonder if one of the keys to making some really good video game content right now in television or, or movie format might be to go to the more classic stuff that carries more of a nostalgia factor. Again, Mario Brothers, people are lining up to go see it. Sonic, you know, you had something to build on there. Now, I know a lot of people will say, oh, they're modern ones. You know, the ones that they're playing right now. But I don't know if that has the hook to it. That As so as much as games that have one to two to maybe even three decades of history behind it, that could make for a really nice starting fertile ground for a filmmaker to come in and say, we can make a really fun thing around this. So I've got a few suggestions here, and then I want to hear your guys' ones on this. Here's a couple of what I think are kind of more classic video games that I actually think would translate well into a great movie or series today. I'm going to start off with this one. Monkey Island. Ooh. I think Monkey Island would make a fabulous movie or even franchise of movies, right? You've got the whole pirate era thing it's it's got a great sense of humor the mystery part of it all that kind of stuff the monkey island games are incredibly entertaining they're really immersive too like my wife and the newest one came out she beat it in a night or two nights like she just i think it was maybe two days she just didn't stop playing until she just beat the whole damn thing and got through all of it but i think monkey island is a serious contender for a, a something you can take that two generations of people have played and know and enjoy. And I just think the basic foundation of the game could lend itself with a good screenwriter to come in and write something really fun around it. So I think actually Monkey Island is one that would have a lot of potential for success. My second one that I'm going to mention here is one that I mentioned quite a bit. Not a lot of other people do, but I'm going to put it out there anyway. Day of the Tentacle. Day of the Tentacle by LucasArts <laughs> is one of the most fun, funny, addictive games that you could possibly, possibly have. And this one goes back. Yeah. This is a spinoff of Maniac Mansion. Okay. Yes. This one goes to Google this one. all the way back. I love Maniac Mansion. But basically, you know, this evil tentacle drinks some swamp water and, you know, well, he was nice, drinks some some wastewater, becomes super evil genius, develops hands and is uh, in a time traveling adventure. And it's a puzzle solving game, but is trying to take over the world. And you've got to try to stop this evil purple tentacle from taking over the world. I love it. I think it would make a fabulous, fabulous movie. All right. This one, you're all going to kind of say. Huh? 
when I put it on there, but think about it. Remember, I don't think the key to a great video game adaptation like, like Sonic and whatever, like you look at Sonic, that doesn't follow the game at all. It just takes the, the premise of the game and builds something great around it, right? I'm going to suggest this. Asteroids. I think you could make a really engaging, kind of delightful little Armageddon kind of movie with, you know, this, there's a, instead of one giant asteroid coming to Earth, there's this huge asteroid field hurling towards Earth. And a lot of the asteroids are too big to burn up in the, and it could be calamity for the Earth. And they have to put together this team, this hotshot team that has to fly out into space and train to take these asteroids out. I, I don't know. I just think as a starting reference point and using something that has very recognizable nostalgia attached with it, I think asteroids could be one that could do pretty well. All right. Let's go on to another one. I almost didn't include this one because I thought, well, it's not old enough, but then I double checked how old it is. It's like, yeah, it is actually pretty old. I think this could make a fascinating game in the hands of the right writer. This could make a neat movie. Mist. Oh, yeah. Ooh, mm-hmm. Mist. That goes back. That's like the 90s. It, yeah, it goes back. And I remember at the time, it was visually the most gorgeous game. Frustrating as hell. But... Very frustrating game, but the most gorgeous game at the time that like anybody had seen when it first came out. It is a puzzler. The game is a puzzler, basically. But you create a mystery kind of to be solved. You create a Inspector LeBlanc kind of movie set within uh, this concept and idea of mist. I think that could be a lot of, I think that could have a lot of upside and a lot of potential. All right. The last one I'm going to mention here is one that has been talked about a long time. There, There have been at least three different occasions when modest to serious talk about this happening has come up. Even to the point at one point, John Cena was attached to do it. But nothing has ever come to fruition. Duke Nukem. Oh, oh yes. yeah. Duke Nukem is a... Forget the game. Duke Nukem Never. is a character that begs to be on screen. Absolutely begs to be on screen. So many movies and TV shows have actually referenced and dropped quotes from Duke Nukem, even though most people would never know it actually came from Duke Nukem. But it came from Duke Nukem. This, now you may say this looks more like a bygone era, maybe an Arnold movie back in the early 90s could have done this. But I am telling you, I believe a James Gunn written Duke Nukem movie today, I think that would slay. I think it would absolutely say, you, it's a little bit of a cross between like a 90s action adventure and say something like, Big Trouble in Little China. Yeah, like They Live and Big Trouble in Little China. That's the perfect analogy. They Live and Big Trouble in Little China merging together, have a baby, and you got Duke Nukem. So I actually think these properties could stand a good chance of, in the hands of the right writers, doing something that could not only make good content, but would appeal to people that to come out and see it, even those who are not gamers, because they'll all remember Duke Nukem. They'll all remember Asteroids. They'll all remember Monkey Island. And if they could capture that lightning in the bottle the way that, say, Sonic did and what hopefully Super Mario Brothers will, this is what I like. So, Chris, let me go over to you. That's my list. Mm -hmm. What do you think of my list? And would you have any any others that you'd want to add to that? No, that's solid. I actually love Duke Nukem as one because I was going to suggest Broforce. Oh my God, remember that? Oh, that game is so fun. I love that. And if it was just a very tongue-in-cheek, goofy version of The Expendables, basically, just really leaning into how ridiculous and overly macho and 90s it is, I think it'd be great. Um, Zelda's the one that comes to mind the most, but it also, I think, is the one that has the most room to be very, very bad. (laughs) Because mm-hmm. the, the Zelda franchise is great and beautiful and stunning. And, you know, you also have a character who we've never really heard speak aside from some exertion noises. So that's <clears> a challenge <throat> to do. Um, I would love Chrono Trigger. I think that could be an oh, amazing that's a good one, one, right? Yeah, you've got yeah, parallel yeah. worlds. You've got dinosaurs. You've got sentient robots. It ticks all the Robert Meyer Burnett check boxes <laughs> of like ninjas and dinosaurs. Yes. I think that'd be really, really fun. Um, Star Fox. Star Fox is the one I want most, though. Yeah, that'd be great. I would love that. That's got a great 3D animated kind of potential with that one. and it could be killer. I'm glad you brought up Link. That really should be the number one on the list. Now, there there was rumor we talked about, there were some whispers going around that they are looking at doing that, especially with 
What's the new one called? Oh, I, oh not Breath oh. of the Wild, but the sequel. Well, to it's it. Breath of the Wild, but the sequel Something. to Breath of the Wild yeah. is yeah. coming out. I can't um, remember the name of it, but that's it. coming out. Breath of the Wild, kind of celebrated by some Tears people. Tears of the Kingdom. There we go. What is it called? Tears, Tears of the Kingdom. See, that's it. Tears of the Kingdom, because Breath of the Wild is celebrated by a lot of people. Well, it's pretty much acknowledged as the de facto greatest Nintendo Switch game of all time, mm -hmm. but a lot of people have it amongst their best video games in general of all time list. And so with the popularity, of, and it carries with all these as well. This is a multi-generational character with Link. And it just, there's a lot of potential there. The question would be, well, how will the hardcore fans feel about Link actually speaking? It's just something they're going to have to get over. Because yeah. I don't think you can make a movie without him speaking. But anyway, that should be. Ray, let me go over to you. <laughs> no, please. You play more video games than me. Yeah, but what, do you got any like game that you think has just been begging to be made? What's I, that one you really like with the young girls and it's kind of a <laughs> mystery? Yeah, keep what is it? Strange. Yeah, what no, is it? The, the mystery one. Life is strange. Life is strange. That's always talking about that one. But it's it could be just like any other drama, I guess. Like, there's nothing that I really want to see. Maybe Metroid. I don't know. Um, That's one that gets brought up a lot because actually, you know Metroid. Halo is like in this. You know, they've already done Halo. This, I know, but like it's like it reminds me of that. Um, you know, I I don't know. I really don't know. I, I I'm everything that uh, I would have uh, said has already been done. Gears of War is coming out. Yeah, yeah. I don't know Taylor. Do you have any? I have a list, uh, and so far you guys haven't mentioned any of them. Uh, number one on my list now that Gears of War is announced is Animal Crossing. Oh, I would oh, love to see Animal Crossing. Listen, as a I will movie. tell you right now. I guarantee you, they make an Animal Crossing movie. That movie makes five hundred million dollars. I'll, I'll just tell you right now. It yeah, may not yeah. be a billion dollars. That movie automatic. I'll tell you right now. That movie. Made, when you look at how, because that the new one came out right at the crest of the pandemic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And my entire YouTube feed was constantly filled with people saying, "Look at my island." Yeah. I mean that. You're right. They do Animal Crossing. If they can that thing make makes 500 million if you, minimum. If you timed it right, you could play with Elijah Wood because he was always on Animal Crossing. <laughs> yeah. So was Brie Larson. She was always playing. Mm -hmm. But um, also on my list, I have Plants vs. Zombies. Yeah. I love that game. And there's two different styles. There's the one where it's just plants and zombies. But there's also one that they made was like um, Call of Duty. And he would run around as a plant or a zombie and shoot people. I thought that was pretty mm. fun. Left for Dead, which is one of my favorite mm. zombie video games, along with Dead Island. I think those would be really good adaptations. I love yeah. Dead Island, and so, but there's so much zombie I content. Yeah. Like I, I just don't know that those ones would click. It, it had to be so tongue in cheek, and then at that point, you've already got, um, oh gosh, what was that one? Zombie Land and stuff like that that already yeah. kind of did that. Yeah. So, um, anyway, guys, question is for you. Just not just think about your favorite video game. What video game do you think a studio could actually look at and go, this would have wide appeal? We think people would be mm. into this, and people would come to it. What stands out to you? Whatever you guys think, jump down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts. We want to take a second to thank a sponsor of this video, Mint Mobile. If saving more and spending less is one of your top goals for 2023, why are you still paying insane amounts of money every month for your phone bill? Switching to Mint Mobile is the easiest way to save this year. As the first company to sell premium wireless service online only, Mint Mobile lets you order from home and save a ton with phone plans starting at just 15 bucks a month. You guys know I made the switch over to Mint Mobile a while ago. The process couldn't have been easier and I can't believe that I am spending less than a third of what I was spending on one of the other major carriers before. By going online only and eliminating the traditional costs of retail, Mint Mobile passes the significant savings on to you. All plans come with unlimited talk, text, and high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and switch easily in minutes with eSIM. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door free, go to mintmobile.com slash campia that's mintmobile.com slash campia cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash campia